Hello everybody. So here is a series of techniques that I came up with of um, for making a beautiful render of um, small molecules. So I was uh, making this kind of a poster or uh, a title image if you will for my presentation and uh, so just to give you a background uh, so this is a protein the big molecule here is a protein and there are two smaller molecules here and uh, making renders of protein inside of 3d programs is not all that difficult this problem has uh, been tackled quite well by by lots of other people and the best way to do it i know is um, there is a plugin called molecular maya which you can run inside of maya autodesk maya and um, it allows you to import a pdb and it gives you all the controls that you need for for making all the geometry and so on uh, and then you can just render that out so that's that's fine i can do that that's that was okay but the problem is that um, making ge making geometries for small molecules is not easy and I, I i wasn't able to find anything that would do that mm, so i i need the geometry to be created inside of Maya or Cinema 4D or some kind of 3D application so that I can I can light it and render it properly. And I couldn't find a solution for a while, but very recently I came up with uh, an approach of doing that, and that involves Houdini. Um, so the because Houdini is a very customizable and you can you, you can so Houdini works in a in a bit different way. So it it, it relies on in, in input and output of data as opposed to geometry so it was it was not difficult at all to, to, to do it with Houdini so I'll just show you step by step how to do that and then you can create uh, beautiful renders of your small molecule like this and and this is very very customizable and you can do it however the way you wish the final render I'm going to do in is in cinema 4d but that's not necessary you can do it in uh, Houdini itself, my Houdini knowledge is not all that great, so I am porting it to Cinema 4D and I know how to light it and render render that better, so I am doing that. But you can do it in Cinema 4D if you, sorry, sorry Houdini if you wish, that, that's fine. So the first step in this process is going to be uh, including additional libraries into the Python installation that comes with Houdini because we need some additional libraries. and. Um, in Cinema 4D, as far as I know, you cannot really do this, but in Houdini, it's, it's very simple. So you know, what I did is I installed Anaconda and Anaconda is, it comes with a huge library of uh, different um, things. And I just wanted to be uh, foolproof. So I just installed Anaconda. And after I installed Anaconda, I have to install the library that I need for this purpose. And that is RDKit. And because I have now installed Anaconda, it's very easy to do this. Um, I just look up how to install the RD kit and here you, you, here you go. This is the installation for RD kit and there is the installation command. You just put copy this here and paste it in the RD kit, sorry, Anaconda prompt and RD kit will be installed. Now the RD kit is in, installed in Anaconda, <clears throat> but now we have to move everything over to Houdini. And the way we do that is we go to this um, we go to the folder where Anaconda installed has installed everything and we copy all the contents Control A and Control C here and then go back to your Python go back to where is Houdini where Houdini, Houdini is installed and you will see a folder called Python 27 that is where Python is installed in Houdini and you paste everything here now all of the stuff that was in Anaconda before has can now be accessed in from inside Houdini for example, now if I go to Python shell in Houdini and I say import pandas, you can see that it, it takes a while, but eventually it will it will work. So now I can actually use pandas inside of Houdini and this can be very useful. I haven't found um, any use case for it yet, but I'm sure I will because pandas is great for making tables and handling that kind of stuff and you know inside Houdini there is a geometry spreadsheet where you can add attributes and so on so there's a great deal of parallelism there so I think it will be very useful but I digress so moving on and now we have we have all the things that we need now we have to uh, read the now now let's uh, get on with making the geometry for the for the small molecule that we need so uh, first of all, there are some things that we have to do. 
so we have to create the the geometry node and then uh, creating a polygon node is not necessary but if you are if you want want to create a polygon in the end you need to do this i this is not necessary for my case so i'll just comment that out uh, let's make this a little bit bigger so now first we import this rdk.chem if you are familiar with working RD, with working with rdk this will be this will make sense to you but if you are not familiar with rdk um, go look up the documentation it's it, it's not that difficult to figure out if you know python and if you know rdk it, it, it will be you will feel right at home that will not be a problem so um, so we, we, we import the library and then we have this statement which is reading the file and here I encountered a very strange problem. Uh, this file path, I'm using an absolute file path here. I mean, uh, this you can you can do, you know, pretty much whatever you want. Uh, you can have a Houdini variable in here and that will work. But I just wanted an, an absolute path. And there was this little problem with the three slashes over here because I mean, Windows and, you know, there is this terrible thing with um, Windows backslashes and so on. So just experiment it, experiment here a bit. And if, if, if I put double slash here, for example, you'll see that there is an error and I was not, not able to figure out where this error is outputted and so on. But after looking for a while, uh, I found that just mid middle clicking and holding over the node gives you the error and it says bad input file. And then I figured out that, you know, you need another backslash for some reason and then everything works. So we read the file in. And this is a, this is something called a mole, molecular supplier. So I'm reading from an SD file, and this SD file I downloaded from PubChem, but this can be any any kind of uh, file that you wish uh, to read. There are so look up in RDKit. You, you can you can get you can you have a reading method for everything, and that is why I wanted to use this library. <clears throat> so this SD mole supplier can read. Um, a molecular library which comes in from comes in uh, as an SDF file and this SDF file can hold one or more molecules in it so currently in this test.sdf there is only one molecule so uh, this will produce an array of this molecule mol objects and I just take the first object in that array and put it in this mol variable and then I call this function to get the number of atoms because I now need to iterate over all the atoms and get the positions of that those atoms and create a point in each of those positions. That's the idea. And um, so let's get on with that. But I, I'll come back to this line in, in, a, in a moment. So I iterate, I start iterating over um, the atoms so that this is how we do it this is how we get the positions of it so get conformer get atom position and you pass an atom index and that is why i i got the number of the atoms and now i'm iterating through it and so we extract the positions like this and this will return a position object and you, you get the idea and now we create a point and this is called geo.create point and this just creates a point that's it and then we need to do two things we first need to do we need to set the position of the point that is done here i want to color the i i i also wanted to color the atom based on the atomic number of the so I, that is why i am i'm storing this atomic uh, number as as an attribute and if you go to the geometry spreadsheet you see sure, sure enough there are 19 atoms and there are these atomic numbers so six is carbon seven is nitrogen and eight is oxygen so <clears throat> that's all fine. So once we got this, this is what we need to have in order to be learning under geometry. After this point, it's quite simple. I'm not going to create any bonds from uh, by using Python or something. Uh, this is this is where Houdini is extremely useful because Houdini come Houdini has this uh, create uh, sorry connect adjacent pieces swap. And if you just hook that up uh, to the points and say connect adjacent points and search it as 95, you'll see all the all, all the bonds are made appropriately because these bonds uh, the, the the atoms are 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 uh, in more or less equal distance in space. So if if you dial in the search radius correctly, uh, you will get your bonds correctly. And now what we we can do several things. Um, we can we can do a polywire to get the bonds as geometry, and then 
we can we can we, we can uh, create spheres in the positions of the atoms notice that um, because I colored them appropriately they, that all got carried over um, I'll, I'll explain how I colored it but um, I have done some uh, point whopping uh, to get the colors in here and then we can merge it and here is our molecule so in the ball and stick representation <clears throat> what we can also do is get VDB from the particles and then we can smooth the VDB to get this kind of surface look and then convert the VDB back to polygons and after some uh, after playing with some attributes and such we get this uh, representation so the attributes are for um, getting the colors in here and then we can export it as, as an alembic because I want to get it into Cinema 4D to render it I don't want to render it here that's all well and good so now um, the part of how how I get the colors uh, from the atomic numbers that I stored in the in the in the attribute and this is this looks a bit complicated but it's not actually complicated there are some there are a few pieces in it but it's quite repetitive so once you get uh, get an idea of how it works you can uh, you can very easily make it I, I had some head scratching with this I probably should have gone with a point wrangle instead of a VOP um, because um, else if would have saved I think some time here but I just wanted to do it the VOP and I did so um, the idea here is that you get this atomic number that we that you, that, that I saved out and then we do a series of compare and this is uh, so we do a series of compare if it is equal to 6 7 8 or 16 so i'm supporting carbon uh, nitrogen oxygen and sulfur and <clears throat> and and if that is true you get in this uh, you get into this if statement we make the color a uh, neutral gray so 0 0.5 0 0.5 that would be 50 percent gray and you pipe that out to in the end you pipe that out to a color but bef but because uh, but because i want to do like um, so if if i have just this then for all the carbons i'll give, get 50 percent gray but but for all the others i'll get zero 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 that is um, black so um, that's not what i want what I want is I want to color all the atoms appropriately and that is why I have to do something like an else if what, what in programming language would be else if but here it's a little bit complicated to hook that up but in the end what I did was uh, I put another compare and this, this just checks whether it is 8 means oxygen and then I do the exact same thing but here it is just 100 which is mean absolutely red and then that outputs it to this mix node and this mix node has takes two colors and this has a bias value so this bias value if it is zero it is input one if it is one then it is input two so and and i i drive that bias value using that boolean that i got out of this compare node that means if this is true then i i am getting this color if it is false i am getting this color that's exactly what i want and that's why this works um, so and and i do i repeat the same exact same thing with the other nodes so if i, I check if it is a nitrogen if it is yes, I, I pipe that color through through the through another mix node and I apply the same logic with the bias there and then I pipe that out and I get a geometry output and I finally output the entire mix node to a color. If you want to support additional atom types, you can just put more in here and just repeat the same process and and you will get to you'll, you'll get the color out in the end. That's how I did the color and once I have done the color, uh, you'll see that uh, the, the points, sorry, the, yeah, the points get the color and then I copy a sphere onto the points, the spheres get the color appropriately <clears throat> and then I merge it, everything is fine here. But that does not happen with the VDB however, because VDB has no concept of a point. So if we want to get the color information over to a point, we have to do an attribute transfer. And that is why after I have done, I have calculated the surface here or the polygons, everything here. I just did an attribute transfer <coughs> from, from the, from our points to the, so from, yes, yeah, an attribute transfer. I didn't put anything and yeah, it's, uh, attributes like cd are understood so that you don't have to do anything just put an attribute transfer and uh, pipe pipe in your point vop to the attribute transfer node and then because these are very jaggy these are very jagged so i just did an attribute blur to soften that over and then i just output it 
So that's it, you have your geometry. Now we move on to the render side. So coming in Cinema 4D, okay, let me do it from, this, from scratch. So I'll just open a new file and file merge objects and let's and look and look for that file that we saved out which is the molecule test.abc this is an alembic file and we just import it here it's very small so we need to scale it up a bit okay there we go so we have our molecule here and <clears throat> what happens is um i what I did in, from Houdini is that I did not export this this representation because then this bonds comes as tubes and th that becomes a bit difficult to deal with. So what I did is that I just uh, exported the bond information as splines because then in Cinema 4D I can I can extrude it or you know I can I can sweep it sorry I can sweep them and then uh, I have more control over that there. And th this spheres has something called a vertex map associated with it, and this is this is the information that we will use for their color. Um, so first of all, we just need to need a sweep node. We get a sweep here and put that in there. Throw in that, and then we get a circle. Sorry a circle uh, turn the radius way down 0 0.1 or something i think one was the proper one put that in there and you have your geom your bond geometry that is all fine so now uh, now what we have to do is uh, we, we have to design a material that will pull out that vertex map information and put it in put it in the appropriate places so I am rendering with Redshift, so let, let's go to Redshift Materials Material and Edit Shader Graph and what we have to do here is just one very simple thing. Uh, we get the vertex attribute and we pipe in this, pipe this into the overall color. So, sorry, not opacity color overall overall color and also to the diffuse color so diffuse color and overall color Oops, sorry that connection didn't go through okay there we go and yeah and, and we also have to make sure that we get we we put in this node in in attribute name otherwise how will it know so now we have this material and we put it in this now now everything is actually working now just do a render render and see if the color information is coming through so we shift render view i think that's already open or something oops yeah so we do a quick render and yes and as you can see that all the color information is coming through now we just need to light it properly and render it and that is up to you so i am uh, so you feel free to do that in any way you wish and if you write light it and render it properly you can you can get a look uh, something like so this is another molecule that i did but the process is exactly the same and if you render if when i render this one so this is this is uh, this is lit and render this is lit properly so there it is so the molecule renders and it has this nice uh, specular highlights and everything and you can make it as fancy as you wish and there is no problem so because you have control over the material you have control over everything so this is a fantastic way of doing it without um, pretty much no manual labor so the source file for this project will be available in the comment section below if you want to check it out feel free also the code the python code that i wrote will be available in github so i'll provide a link to that as well in case you don't have houdini or uh, you, you have a different version of it so feel free to check that out and if you have any questions please let me know i will be glad to answer them so that's it uh, there are several things that um, uh, i had to do for this to work so if you got anything out of it let me know and yeah bye bye